Hello everybody, my name is Paul and I'm a country realtor in the western part of Virginia and I have a website on YouTube called uh, Virginia Homesteaders. I'm a big fan of homesteading and living out in the country and today I'm going to give you at least 10 reasons why you should not live in a big city. <laughs> I know there's a lot of city dwellers out there uh, that might be uh, offended by this little presentation here but on a really practical note there's a really lot of good reasons why it's just nowadays especially with the technology we have to not really live in a city. Now I've traveled quite a bit in my life and I've seen not many big cities and some quite a few international cities, really big ones and uh, honestly there are some people here in America if you ever saw New Delhi or Bangkok you'll be awfully glad that New York is, is less crowded. <laughs> but there's a really lot of reasons and I want to go through them here. I have a little list and maybe they're not in exactly order but it's really actually a serious thing because the way people live, the way we live in this world, makes a huge difference in how our general happiness and so on. Now if you look around the world, the history of many cultures, that there are still people farming on rice fields in parts of Asia and so on, and there's still people up in the mountains of Peru and so on doing their thing with potatoes or whatever. And it's a very, very different kind of a lifestyle to live out in the rural areas because what happened over the, the history of our world, people tend to go to where the jobs were, they go slowly but surely move into the city and cities get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it becomes extremely hard to maintain a large city beyond a certain point because if you've ever been to New Delhi for example, uh, oh my, if you try to drive from one of the perimeter of Delhi, I mean it could take like eight hours, I mean it's literally just an absolutely endless city just goes on and on and on and on and on and that's similar to Bangkok so now to get it really down to a brief I'm trying to make these videos as short as possible to make them entertaining and informative now one of the big reasons to not live in a city is the expense <clears throat> and I don't have to talk much about that because anybody who lives in a city I'm very familiar with New York City for example <clears throat> and everywhere you go everything's more expensive and Housing is very expensive and so on. So you have a tremendous number of very, very high costs if you just want to even have like a one bedroom apartment in New York City. And then you got to go to the grocery store, you got to take the subway, you got to pay taxes, and it's just an endless expense. Now, that's one reason. Now, there are some much more practical reasons uh, on, on some level, even if people have the money. Our food supply, you know. I've been to some of the stores in New York City, there are some grocery stores there that are very, very fantastic. They have all kinds of stuff, but it comes from Thailand, it comes from far away, and it's expensive, and honestly, most people don't shop at the sort of higher-end grocery stores. A lot of them go to the lower end, they just get the box stuff and the cheapest stuff and the house brands or whatever, and they go home. So the problem with the food supply in a big city is because, for example, if they have a power outage in New York City or some big city, after a few couple of days or so, the refrigerators are holding all that food, all the freezers, they're just going to have to empty them out. It can get really, really bad very, very quickly. And, of course, people don't have the transportation if the subways aren't running and buses and so on. If there's a big snowstorm or a hurricane or something and they got to button down, Wow, if a big city can run out of food really, really fast. <clears throat> and then there's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no replacement for the food very easily because it comes in by trucks across many bridges and so on. So the food supply in a big city is actually a very critical thing that if all is going well, everything is hunky dory and everything, okay, you got your food. But man, a power outage or a storm or something like that, man, it'll be a serious problem in a big city. Which brings me to another uh, factor of cities. As many people know, a lot of the big cities of the country and even around the world are on oceans or on big rivers and so on. Now, hurricanes, the United States, I remember a few years ago, a number of years ago, there was a hurricane down in Louisiana and so on in that area, and it just ripped entire big mansions right after they found, they're just like nothing but a a slab left, you know, and um, <clears throat> then you got the problem of evacuation because when people hear a storm is coming, let's say on a coastline or something, 
And I'm in Virginia, and Virginia has a hurricane tradition over on the East Coast and so on. And boy, the evacuation is incredibly difficult because, man, you got everybody who wants to move and go across the bridges and go out of town. <clears throat> it can get very, very serious in an evacuation situation if you don't have a, a way to go somewhere quickly and get out. I mean, you could be stuck in your car for hours and hours and hours, and some areas of the country it's cold or whatever, and maybe it's raining, and then you run out of food and water. It can be a very terrible situation, so that's one reason to get out of a city. <clears throat> of course, that follows along with traffic, and, you know, I've been to a lot of these cities, and honestly, <laughs> all day long, all day long, just noise, 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 cars beeping, honking, sirens going on, helicopters going on, trains, subways. The noise is endless. <clears throat> A lot of people have lived in cities for many years, or maybe they lived in a suburb that was quite busy, but they had, they don't know what it's like to live out there where, where there's no street lights, so you can just look up and see the stars, and you hear a stream or something, and you don't hear any traffic. There are so many places in the country where you can just sit quietly, and you don't have to listen to any of that stuff. No jet noise, or hardly one, maybe a helicopter now and then, you see it far away, going to some hospital or something, but generally... <clears throat> the rural areas of this country are far, far quieter. And that brings us to another factor, which is our health. You know, when, when you have stress in your life day after day after day, and everything is a competition, you got to figure out where to park, and you got to fight for your parking place, and get a seat on that bus or that train, and then wait in line, and just everything is just a constant, constant stress level. It's just not a healthy way to live at all. And people live that way, and I'm familiar with some people who live that way in the city, and they just, the stress level becomes like, that's the norm for them. Like every day is like adrenaline, 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 adrenaline. After a while, it can really seriously impact your health. <clears throat> so the health issue is another reason. Crime and safety, don't have to talk about that very much, but boy, out in the countryside, you know, I've made some other videos about this and some of the other areas that I have on YouTube that in many parts of the country, most people on the road might have a gun in their house. Why? Because there's a whole lot of reasons, okay? Uh, farms or there's, there's things to uh, pests and rabbit animals and foxes and wolves and bears and then people, there are people who legitimately hunt, and they have a really good reason. They enjoy that sport. They go out and hunt, and we eat meat of all kinds, so why not hunt? Why not take these deer? There's, where I live, there's dozens of deer around. I see deer every single day. If everything, something really happened, some really serious situation developed, hey, there's deer out there, you know, and they're really nearby. And worst case scenario, of course, people would harvest them. So that goes back to the food supply. You see, so out in the countryside, the safety is, you don't have the gun crime. I mean, if people have guns in their homes out in the countryside, and most of my neighbors do, I'm sure they have guns, and some of them I've even talked to, and they definitely have guns, but they hardly ever see them. Now and then, a target practice in the backyard, they set up some little thing, you know, to shoot and practice and sight their guns and so on. But you just don't have the crime, because... Any crazy person who decided to go rob down some of these back roads, they pull up to some farmer's house and they'll, they'll get a shotgun in their face and a dog. And so they'll say, well, please get off my property here. I'll just call the police. And then the people will have a hard time getting out because out in the countryside, there's hardly any street lights. And if you don't have a map and you don't know what the hell you're doing, you get lost really easily. The police will catch you. So we don't have a lot of crime out in the countryside even though there are a lot of guns. Now, there's a lot of other kind of factors I want to mention here briefly, like surveillance. I mean, in big cities, you have like all kinds of cameras and this and that and surveillance. You got to get permission to show your ID to go in somewhere and everywhere is just monitoring. And, it, you know, this is a whole big subject that I can get into sometime, but the technology exists right now where if they really wanted to find somebody, anybody, they just put the picture out. It's picture recognition, voice recognition. And they'll find out if you just went to that grocery store the other day and you bought this and that and the other thing. And 
it's, it's surveillance on some level that we just really can't comprehend, and I don't want to dwell on that right here, but, I mean, think about it. The technology in some of these cities is like, it's almost like a virtual prison state where every single, where every single building you go into, there's some kind of camera watching you and so on. And personally, a lot of people don't like that. And so if you want to get rid of that situation, just live out in the country where uh, they don't have anywhere near that kind of a, a technology set up. <clears throat> out in the countryside, you have a lot more community, folks. You know, there's uh, cities, people have little friendships, but I've been in some of the big cities, and it's really hard to have a community in a city. Out in the countryside, I have neighbors, you know, three times in one year, I had to call and say, hey, I left my keys on my ignition and the lights are on or something, and I had to, he's happy to come down and help me jump my car. <laughs> the people, the neighbors in the countryside are, are helpful. They're not annoying, you see. They're likely to help in a, in a crisis of some kind. So it's a very, very different situation out here in the countryside <clears throat> as far as the community. And people support each other in a very, very natural way. They go on and they they talk to each other because, because they're in the same neighborhood and they see each other often. They shop at the same stores. People know me at the post office. They know me in a number of stores in town. So it's a very, very different kind of situation as far as a community out in the, in the countryside. And it's a very long tradition in most parts of the world where people just bonded together. Their families and friends, they, they had different crises that happened and transitions and they cooperated on a whole different level, a bunch of different levels of food and, and all kinds of stuff. So <clears throat> having a community is a really big, a big factor for leaving the city. Um, I think I've covered quite a few here, uh, maybe even more than 10 by now, but just to summarize here, I favor homesteading is a very practical way of life because when you get out in the countryside, you get more in tune with nature. And if you have young children and growing up, it's a wonderful thing for them to be able to play in the woods and streams and have tactile and physical interaction with the earth. It's a very, very, it's almost a very sacred thing actually to, to live close to land because you get close to animals and, and historically people who, who have domestic animals <coughs> There's a bond with them, just like we have with dogs and so on, but people have a bond with their cattle because they're producing food and, and so on, or milk and whatever, and in many parts of the world, they don't, like, harvest cows the way we do. They might, like, for example, in India, which is pretty much vegetarian, but what they'll do is they'll definitely have a cow for the milk and for the, um, the yogurt and the, and the butter that they can make. And then they have a bull and they can use the bull for various kinds of work and it's still being used many many places in the world today people still use oxygen oxygen and cattle for work i know it's hard for a lot of americans to understand that because we see all these big tractors but there really are many places in the world today that are still using very traditional domestic animal based types of agriculture uh, ox carts and so on plows and in India and in other parts of the world, they also use camels and elephants in India and Thailand. So those kinds of uh, interactions with animals are very, very, they're really great for human beings to, to participate in this life, you know, and touch the earth and, and communicate with the various animals and learn what it, it's involved to produce a little bit of food. Because on the countryside, it's very hard for one person or a small family to, to realistically grow all their food and, and everything on one little place when they have a job or something. But if you have some of that, we're out in the Virginia where there are more small farms and private farms than any state in the country, we have a whole lot of people. They might have another job or occupation. Maybe they're a carpenter, plumber, truck driver, teacher, whatever. And they have, in addition to that, they have maybe some horses or a cow or some chickens or some llamas or or something like that and it's a very very wonderful way to kind of have a best of both worlds you can go to town and do all your thing and do all your shopping for certain things you need but then you can go home and you can be on a, a place where there is a bounty and there's water and there's the sun and there's a interaction with the animals and so on so 
I don't know if I counted right, if I got the, all the ten right here in order, but there's at least ten reasons that I can think of to not live in a city. And part of it is, uh, again, the, the seriousness I'm talking about, evacuation, where in a big, huge emergency, like we had this COVID thing and so on, believe me, out in the, out in the countryside, people have a much, much more mitigated experience. For example, a hurricane. A hurricane can hit the coast of, of uh, Virginia, where I live, and it can batter all South Carolina, North Carolina, this mash up, but by the time it gets this far inland, way in the west part of Virginia and the hits the hills, we just get rain. And we don't get that. So not only that, we don't even have to evacuate. So if there's a hurricane coming and we see him, well, we know we just stay in our house and tolerate the rain for a few days or whatever, but we don't have to worry about uh that kind of a flooding coming up on the coastline and bashing us and damaging our homes and all that. So it's a very, very serious thing to think about when you think about where you're going to settle down and have your family. So I encourage people to look in the country side, wherever they happen to live, go a little further inland. Uh, I think uh, historically, again, the coastlines is another really good reason, especially there's many, many cities on the coastline. And they're vulnerable to many, many different things. All the big hurricanes and typhoons that come around the world, they hit the coastline cities. And on the west coast of the United States, of course, we have, uh, even up in Alaska, we have a, a very serious problem with the earthquake potential and tsunami potential. So typically the longest su surviving human beings that have survived all the catastrophes on Earth are living in the mountains or are way inland and elevated and and doing their thing with the gardening and, and living off the land. So I hope I've kind of made the point here. I don't want to be uh, in the larvist or anything, but I think it's very, very prudent for us to think about where we live in the long term. And at least if you want to have a job or live in a city or something, have, have some kind of a family resort or family escape place somewhere out in the country where maybe part, part of the family can share ownership or something. And it doesn't have to be fancy because for example, you can get a piece of land that has the right zoning. That's another quick thing I want to mention here. The zoning and the permissions and the, what you can do with the property that you own. If you're in a suburb with the Housing Association, Homeowners Association, you're going to be restricted. You can't have those chickens and certainly not a rooster. And, you know, God forbid you try to have a llama or something like that or a cow. <laughs> You'll get a knock on the door for the... The local townspeople say, well, excuse me, but, you know, we don't allow cows. Up. <clears throat> I know your backyard is almost an acre, but we don't want cows out there. So the zoning is really important, uh, what you can do with the land practically, and also water sources and septic, because if you have your own water on a well on a, on a piece of land out in the countryside, you don't need city water. And uh, if you have a stream nearby or something, you can filter the water out and God forbid something happens and you can't get your well pump working, at least you can go to a stream and pump some water with a battery powered pump and get yourself some clean water, just filter it out. So there are some very, very serious reasons and about moving out into the countryside. And then there's some just more aesthetic reasons and health reasons and so on, food reasons. But I hope I made the point here. Without belaboring here, I want to encourage people to listen to some of my other videos about different aspects of this transition that we're going through. Um, I grew up in India. I'm familiar with, uh, you know, primitive cultures to some degree. And there's people out there living for thousands of years, just hundreds and hundreds of years, whatever, just harvesting the same old rice, doing the same old thing with their, their crops or whatever, and their cows. And human beings survived. Most of humanity's experience on this planet has not had grocery stores the way we think of them. <laughs> so keep those things in mind and where you settle down. And if you can't live in this, out in the country, at least have an escape place because it's a really good option to have for a family, especially. So thanks again for listening. I hope people like and share. And I hope to see you in some of my other videos. And thank you.